Lawyer Maliba, having gone by the submission that has been made, and then also those out there in the public domain, with the Supreme Court saying that it is clothed with the jurisdiction to hear the substantive matter, then if there's the need to invoke the powers of the High Court, as stipulated in Article 99, in relation to a member of parliament having vacated his or her seat, then it means that that action could be taken henceforth. Is that not the case? I don't get the import of your question. Uh, uh, can you rephrase? So, 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 so basically, in this judgment, they say that there is no determination that if you are going to contest the next election on the ticket of another party or as an independent onto another party or a party to an independent candidate in the next election, you cannot be seen to be vacating your seat in the current parliament you're serving. Yeah. And I'm saying, in order for that action to be invoked, in relation to Article 99, who has the power to do that? Who can go to the high court and say that this gentleman has taken this action as a result of that, per Article 99, I want you as a high court to do what is needful. So that's how confusing the Supreme Court ruling is. The more I read the judgment, the more I became embarrassed. What I noticed is that the Supreme Court sought to rewrite the Constitution under the guise of interpretation. And they have no said jurisdiction. They have no jurisdiction to rewrite the Constitution as they purported to have done the last time that this matter was in court or paid the ruling. Why? The Supreme Court, in my view, acted unconstitutionally. How can it? It can. Because the Supreme Court itself is under the Constitution. And the Supreme Court cannot give an interpretation which is not born out of the Constitution. So when the Supreme Court gives an interpretation that is not born out of the Constitution, that is unconstitutional. And I've heard the Attorney General say that the law is what the Supreme Court says it is. You heard him say that. And I cringed. The law is what the Supreme Court says it is if it is born out or is envisaged by the Constitution. The Supreme Court is not higher than the Constitution. So today, there is no way if the judges in the Supreme Court, all of them sleep and wake up and say that we want to make a ruling that all men in Ghana are women and women in Ghana are men. Eh? And they agree at the, at the conclave and then interpret the constitution, a portion of it or a provision of it and say, so it is. That cannot happen. In other words, the Supreme Court cannot on its own decide that even though the words are clear, we will say it is like this. I don't know where they are following me. The Supreme Court has no such power. They have no such power. The Supreme Court, I have third time under our number. And people, you see, people, people, we have made it look, and the Attorney General has also helped in that. We have made it look like the Supreme Court can say what it wants. Never. The Supreme Court itself is a creation of this Constitution. And so it's under it. First and foremost, was there even an issue of interpretation? There wasn't. The words are very clear. But they went ahead to interpret and said that the fact that you pick a nomination form does not mean that you are joining a political party. And I asked myself, you are joining a political party different from the vehicle that brought you in. And I asked myself, can I, who is known to be an NDC, just walk into the MPP, MPP a constituency office and pick a form and say I'm going to contest for MPP candidate. Can I just do that? 
before you pick the form, you must have first joined them. I'm saying this again. Before you pick a form and even go for nomination, you must have first satisfied the conditions of being a member of the party before you can pick the form. So, uh, the, let's take the speaker, the deputy speaker. Isiyama. Isiyama was independent. Now going. Now going for party. Party, yes. What it simply means is that the MPP have satisfied themselves that he's now their member. That's how come he can pick a form. And what's the Supreme Court saying? That even when you file your nomination, even when you file your nomination, it doesn't mean that you have crossed carpet. How is that possible? How is that possible? This is a program. Other guys are listening. So me, I don't like quoting article this, article this. You like to go ordinary? Ordinary. Okay. So let me just refer you then. Because that's by the existence of the provisions in the MPP's constitution, which makes it automatic and very clear mm. that if you take certain actions, best you want to, then you forfeit your membership, thereby meaning that ideally you shouldn't be representing the same party in parliament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you come to the national constitution, in this judgment, the Supreme Court says in its own estimation mm. that there is no doubt that rival meanings have been placed on the provisions of Article 97 1G and H of the 1992 Constitution by the Speaker's statement on the floor of Parliament and the plaintiff thereby displacing all lingering doubts that this is a proper case for invoking the original interpretative jurisdiction of the Supreme Court as so established. That clearly means that in the mind of the Supreme Court, they feel this is in their domain. I disagree with them because we all did interpretation at the law school, including them. You give words their ordinary meaning first. Give words their ordinary meaning first. The meaning on the street of Accra. Give those words that meaning first. And if it leads to absurdity, then you can now bring in a secondary meaning. Didn't we do all this in the law school? Give these words that you have read, give them their other meanings, and let's see whether there will be absurdity. Shadrach, put Article huh? 97. G you put them, read it. Put them on the screen put so it. that everybody will see. And we'll see whether it will lead to absurdity. You don't just jump into the middle and then start saying that you want to interpret. For what reason? Those words, and I said, and Justice Tanko has also reiterated that point, this judgment will not stand the test of time. And you know what they have done? They have effectively struck down Article 97. Article 97, the question is, when will it ever be relevant the way they have done it? When will we ever, eh? when will we ever say that per Article 97, a minister, eh, a member of parliament has crossed carpet? They have effectively done away with it. They've made it useless. They've rather given it a meaning. They deem fit. And I'm saying that let's follow their meaning. When we follow their meaning, when will this article ever be invoked? It will never happen. It will never happen. See, I was here the last time, and I asked the question, what did the speaker do for the writ to be filed against him? And it is true. The majority side admitted that the writ was filed on the 15th, speaker's action was on the 17th, so the writ preceded the speaker's action. So what are you calling on the speaker, what are you calling on, the, on parliament, uh, on the Supreme Court to do? There was nothing before the, the Supreme Court. And what was the reason for the writ on the 15th? Because what Afenio Marquez is seeking to say is that the speaker's pronouncement must be declared null and void. On the 15, the speaker make any pronouncement for God's sake. So you're saying what? He was only acting on speculation on a campaign platform? Supreme Court doesn't take speculations. So what are you saying? I'm saying that 
there was no course of action. A course of action has not arisen. See how they, they try to meander their way out of it. There was no course of action. Now, one would have expected that now that the speaker had made a pronouncement on the 17th, per the Supreme Court rules, you can amend your rate. One would have expected them to amend their rate to reflect the complaint they have. They didn't amend their rate. So what was the Supreme Court going to determine when speaker had not yet, as it were, spoken? That's another flaw. Another flaw. You see? So there are a lot of flaws in this judgment, and it is not helpful to our democracy. And I tend to agree with my senior judge, Shikata, that coup d'etats are not only carried out by men in uniform, mm -hmm. but they can also be carried out mm -hmm. by men and women in wigs and gowns. And it's cool. You know? So, you look at all these things, then you begin to think that the, 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 the building blocks of our democracy are being chipped away gradually, 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 and at the end of the day, we will not have a democracy. This is not how I expected the Supreme Court to conduct itself. And I agree with Justice Tanko that a future Supreme Court uh, differently composed would overturn this. So, so, so practically now, what is the recourse to any party? I mean, individual or political parties or such organizations in such circumstances? This ruling would create, if it has not started creating, confusion in the political parties. Mm. Because members of those parties would join political parties and ditch their party, but still remain in those parties. Now, in the past, people were afraid to lose their seats. So, so they didn't behave in a way that would let their parties expel them. Now, it's free for all. They will do it right in your face. You can't do them nothing. No, what they call foco. You can't do them foco. And that's why they say, she gelege. You can't do them foco. You can't do them foco. Now, the next thing too is that, the next thing too is that, the MPP is actually behaving like owners of the country, and what doesn't suit them, they wouldn't accept and go to the Supreme Court and get endorsement. What if the MPP is only, you know... Why am I saying this? Why am I saying this? A redress for what them? am I saying this? The same MPP filed a motion to remove Adjua Safo when Adjua Safo was not conducting herself to their benefit. Everything is about their benefit, though. Everything. So when you file that motion, not to the Supreme Court, to the Speaker, to declare that seat vacant, if the Speaker had declared it vacant, would you have gone to court? The answer is no. Because at that time, it benefited them. That's what they want. So it's now like we are ruling. That is the whole thinking about this thing. That's it. My brother here was talking about divorce and referencing it to what we are talking about. You don't, you don't compare oranges and apples. In divorce, is there a law that says that if you file your divorce, you are deemed to have already existed a marriage? Is there a law like that? There's a law. There's a law which the, says that... In the party. Not in the party. The constitution says that he, if he leaves the party of which he once was a member at the time of 
his election. At the time of his election, did he leave the party or not? Because I have told you here that he has left the party because you cannot pick a nomination form in any political party if you are not a member of that party. And I'm sure if the Supreme Court had taken time to allow uh, Justice Eric Joe to, because he has been a political party man, you would have told them how you can be. Because, because, because let's say Sam George. Can Sam George just go to his constituency and to, to the MPP constituency and pick a form and say, I'm going to contest? Before he does that, the MPP will have satisfied itself that Sam George has now become our member, for God's sake. You see? So, this ruling is much ado about nothing. But, because the Supreme Court and there has not been any reversal, we are bound to live by it. But I'm saying that this ruling will not stand the test of time.